Welcome to our session, Emerging Pools for the Investigation of Liver Toxicity. Today I will report about methods for functional imaging of hepatotoxicity, which allowed us to identify a so far unrecognized mechanism of hepatotoxicity. Originally, we discovered this mechanism for acetaminophen and later realized that this is a common mechanism which occurs after glutathione depletion. Early after acetaminophen overdose, bile can equally become wider, tight junctions are compromised, and concentrated bile leaks into the sinusoidal blood. From here, bile acids are transported into the cytoplasm secreted into bicarbonate liquidity, leak again, and this leads to futile cycling of bile acids, causing increased concentrations of bile acids in the cell, which exceed cytotoxic thresholds. A key experiment was when we interrupted this futile bile acid cycling, which strongly ameliorated hepatotoxicity. First to the basics. Acetaminophen is metabolically activated to the reactive NAPKI, which depletes glutathione, causes oxidative stress, and via activation of JUM kinase, causes a specific type of cell death named programmed necrosis. Necrosis occurs in the center of liver lobules where it coincides with expression of cytochrome p 52 e one And this necrosis can also be seen macroscopically by white dots on the surface of the liver. It is well known that patients with acetaminophen overdose have increased bile acid concentrations in blood. But it is not yet known why this happens. It may be a secondary consequence of liver tissue damage or, which would be more interesting, an early initiating event due to a breach of the blood bile barrier. These hypotheses have already been published by others in 2014. To come closer to an answer, it is helpful to revisit the physiology of bile flux. So this here is an intravital video of a mouse liver where you can see sheets of hepatocytes, here sinusoidal blood, and now we inject a fluorescent bile salt analog. You can see how it occurs in the blood, taken up into the hepatocyte, and now secreted here into bicarnaliculi. And these bicarnaliculi are part of a network which is connected to bile ducts that finally drain the bile into the intestine. When we obtain blood from patients after acetaminophen overdose, the exact time of intoxication is usually not documented. And then we obtain such a heterogeneous situation. Some patients with high bile acid concentrations and low liver enzymes in blood. For other patients, it's vice versa. So a heterogeneous situation, which is difficult to interpret. And here, Hartmut Jeschke and Stephen Curry helped us. They made it possible to repeatedly sample blood from the same patient with acetaminophen overdose. And these are data of a 19-year-old woman who ingested a very high dose of acetaminophen leading to high blood concentrations. And a key message here is that the increase of bile acids in blood occurs before the increase of liver enzymes. And this result motivated us to perform a control study in mice where we administer an overdose of acetaminophen 300 milligram per kilogram and time dependently 
central blood. From the portal vein, this is the liver inflow, the hepatic vein, the liver outflow, and from heart blood. And what we learned is that there is also a transient increase in bile acids in the hepatic vein and in heart blood between hour one and two. And only later liver enzymes increase and only later hepatocyte death events occur. For example, after four and eight hours as here evidenced by tunnel staining. This is now a key experiment which took us almost four years to understand. But first the observation. This is an intravital video of a mouse with an acetaminophen overdose. Red visualizes mitochondrial activity and green is the fluorescent bile salt analog. Now please focus on this cell. You can see that the protrusion of the bile canaliculus forms gets larger. Now bile acids leak into the cell which loses its mitochondrial potential and dies. So this is the typical series, canalicular protrusion, leakiness, loss of mitochondrial activity. And yeah, the next step is always a systematic image analysis. So here, each pixel of such an image is assigned to a certain cell structure, such as bicanaliculi, the hepatocytes, the sinusoids. And now the fluorescence of the bile salt analog is quantified in each of these three compartments. And what you can see is this sharp increase in the blood followed by a decrease. Rapid increase in the cells followed by a decrease. This is the situation for healthy livers. If we now image about one and a half hours after an acetamine of an overdose, we obtain a completely different picture. So again, an increase in the cells and in blood, but the levels stay high. So the cells maintain high signals for the bile acid analog and also in blood we see for much longer periods uh, high concentrations of this fluorescent bile acid. All this can be quantified. For example, we see now a time-dependent increase of these plebs of bicanaliculi, but this leads to an important question whether perhaps the exogenously administered bile salt analog might have caused these changes. And therefore we analyzed tissue of livers where no exogenous bile as it was analyzed. And we also see these plebs here visualized by different methods. And moreover, we analyzed endogenous bile acids. And one possibility to do this is by MALDI MSI. So here we used sub 2 e one immunostained tissue slices and superimposed the MALDI signal here for one bile acid, taurocholic acid. And what we learned is, again, that there is a transient increase with a maximum after two hours. And this increase occurs predominantly in the paracentral region. We further confirmed this result by mass spectrometry of liver homogenate, which also showed this transient increase. So the changes of the bicanaliculi, these morphological changes, that motivated us to study tight junction proteins. Here we see clear differences between controls and livers after acetamine overdose concerning the widening of these structures and the fragmentation. And an important question now is if these morphological changes lead also to functional consequences. To study this, we established methods to analyze the blood bile barrier. First for leakage from blood to bile. For this, we use fluorescent 
dextran, which under control conditions never leaks from the blood to the canaliculi. So this is the fluorescent dextran, and you, say, you see that it stays in the blood and never reaches here, the bicanaliculi. And this is in contrast to the situation after acetaminophen overdose. Here you can see that it goes into the blood and then reaches the bicanaliculi. This can be seen even better for this larger magnification. So here is an example of a bicanaliculus. Now you can see that it enters the blood and after this, the bicanaliculus. So here we see a clear leakage from blood to bile. To study also the opposite constellation, leakage from bile to blood, we used CMFDA. CMFDA is passively taken up into the cell where it is cleaved by esterases to release fluorescein. And then fluorescein is secreted to the bicanaliculi. Let's see the control situation. So we see nothing in the blood, which is an advantage, and then the bicanaliculi. Now we move on to the situation after acetaminophen overdose. So we see again how green fluorescence occurs in the canaliculi, but we see it also almost permanently in the cell and also in the blood. Let's go to the larger magnification. Fluorescence in canaliculi, but also in the sinusoidal blood and quantification in sinusoidal blood clearly shows leakage from bicanaliculi to sinusoidal blood. The next important question is if these increases of intracellular bile acid concentrations induced by acetaminophen overdose is high enough to explain cytotoxicity. And this question was addressed by in vitro systems. So here we have available sandwich cultures of hepatocytes or spheroids. If you look at the spheroid, you see a situation where only the outer hepatocytes take up the bile acid. And here the sandwich culture represents an advantage because we have a homogeneous situation where all hepatocytes from the culture medium side take up bile acids and secrete them to the bile canaliculi. So we continued with this culture system. In this experiment, we exposed hepatocyte cultures for this period with bile, which was collected by a catheter from the bile duct, and besides cytotoxicity, also measured intracellular bile acid concentrations. And now we can see that concentrations above 100 micromolar, some bile acids are cytotoxic and leads to intracellular bile acid concentrations in this range, which are, by the way, higher compared to the culture medium. So hepatocytes enrich bile acids. And when we isolate hepatocytes before and two hours after acetaminophen overdose, and then analyze bile acids, we can see that this increase is indeed in a range which is observed in hepatocytes which experience cytotoxicity. So this acetaminophen-induced increase in bile acids indeed explains uh, cytotoxicity. Now an important therapeutic question is if interruption of this bile acid cycling will ameliorate hepatotoxicity. And among the most important uptake carriers is NTCP, which can be inhibited by Mucrodex B. And when we now admin administered Mucrodex B together with acetaminophen, toxicity was massively ameliorated. So here we see the lack 
of white dots after Mucleodex B administration, that the cell area is much smaller, increase of liver enzymes is smaller, while in these control experiments, CYP2E1 and scrutathione remains unaltered. What we also can see is that Mucleodex B protects from this increase of bile acids in liver tissue, also quantified here with acetaminophen only and in combination with Mucleodex B, while in blood the increase of bile acids is higher, which is logic when we block the uptake into the liver. However, what is not altered is the morphological and tight junctional changes of the bicameliculi. So this is a direct effect of APAP. What we block are the secondary effects due to bile acids. Yeah, so in conclusion, we see this situation where futile bile acid cycling after leakage from bile canaliculi increases intracellular bile acid concentrations and causes hepatocyte death, a mechanism which can be interrupted by Mucleodex B. Finally, I would like to thank all colleagues who helped with this study, particularly Ahmed Galab, who is an outstanding expert in the field of intravital imaging, Stefan Höme and Adrian Friebel, who did the image analysis, and without the help of Hartmut Jeschke, this study would not have been possible. Thank you very much.